Now, did you know that you can actually do so much more with your serger than just a regular three thread or a four thread stitch like I have here, for example. Now, today I would love to invite you to come along with me. Don't be shy. It's not as scary as it seems and discover what our sergers can do for us because if you already have it, why not use it to its full potential, right? I have prepared some beautiful examples for you from my own personal sewing to show you where I use these techniques and why I use them. Of course, we're going to do some surging together as well. So without any further ado, let's get started with this first technique that I use the most in my sewing. And that of course is rolled hem. In fact, the sleeves on the blouse that I'm wearing today are finished with a rolled hem as well. Now, personally for me, rolled hem works the best on light to medium weight fabrics. And I use it on both knits and wovens. Here you can see multiple examples from my own personal sewing. As you can see, I use it on various hems like the bottom of the garment or the skirt or a hem of the sleeve to creating a layered designs where that hem really gives lightness to the actual construction of the garment to even finishing the insides of the seams. Here I have cut a little strip of fabric, so let's go ahead and do this together. Now here I strongly encourage you to go ahead and dig out your own manual for your personal serger because companies are different, models are different, settings are different, a lot of things are different. So what I do here might not apply to you. And if I were you, I would stick to what my manual says extra tip if you do not have manual let's say you bought it used or maybe you have an older serger a lot of times you can find them online print them out and have them handy they have a ton of useful information i am using brother lock 1034 dx not to be confused with 1034 d first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to open up my serger grab a little screwdriver and remove the left needle after that i will remove a stitch finger as well change my stitch length and also I will need to adjust the tension as well. So with rolled hem, I usually check on the scrap piece of fabric first because a lot of times I do need to play a little bit with the tension to get exactly the tightness of the rolled hem that I want. So that's what I would suggest for you to do as well. Now let's go ahead and uh, serge away. Place your fabric like this, lower your presser foot and let's get started. All right, let's take a look at this. I'm really excited because I know this is such a simple but very useful technique. I use it all the time for a reason. Now, there are times where I prefer machine rolled hem, of course, but this is great for situations where you're really short on that hem. Has that ever happened to you when you have cut something out or maybe fabric shrunk or maybe you took the wrong measurement and you're just, uh, you're just like about one inch or maybe two inches short and you can possibly fold it under and maybe you can do a faced hem either, the rolled hem really comes to the rescue. Plus, you can use it for a lot of household uh, items like, for example, napkins and tablecloths. And then you can also use it for beautiful silk scarves and you can use it for so, so many things. Plus, if you use a contrasting thread, it can also add a design element to your garment as well. I know it might be a little bit scary re-threading your machine, changing the settings, and then removing the needle, and even more so, changing the presser feet. But I promise you, once you get it, you get it. I re-thread my overlocker probably once every two or three days, and it gets easier. <laughs> and it's so rewarding when you can do all of these different things with it as well. So if I can do it, then you can do it as well. For this next technique, I'm going to put my stitch finger, oops, my stitch finger back, I will leave one needle in and one needle out, but you can also do this with two needles in as well. And I will change the presser foot. All my settings are back to what they usually are for just a three thread or a four thread stitch. Now this foot is nothing fancy. I did not purchase it separately. It actually came in the box together with my serger. And in fact, a lot of sergers nowadays do come with this gathering foot and it does exactly that. It gathers fabric for you. Here, I'm going to leave the stitch length at three. Here, I'm going to change the differential feed to number two. 
And here you can also see a little indicator that shows you that it's going to gather the fabric. And what the manual doesn't tell us is I actually like to increase the stitch width to number seven, especially when I'm working just with one needle, because that way the stitch width is wider, it catches both layers of the fabric, and in my case, it gets a better result. You're going to take two pieces of fabric, one of them is going to be gathered, the other one is going to be the piece of fabric to which this gather is going to be attached. You're going to place them in a way that one is facing up and the other one is facing down. And then you're going to feed that fabric right over here into this gathering foot. Now you want to make sure that the fabric aligns, then lower your presser foot. And here the bottom fabric is the one that's going to be gathered, so it's going to feel a little strange. but this is what's going to happen when you press on your foot pedal. And you can do it on both knits and woven. So this is cotton, but I do have two samples over here that are knit. The dark blue one is just a regular cotton knit, the one that you would use for t-shirts, for example. And the light sample is a really nice, soft French terry. I really love this technique, but I must say I don't get the pleasure of using it too often because I only use it for really big bulk projects, like for example, Dress a Girl Around the World, where I have a ton of ruffles to do and all of them are the same and this definitely saves the day. Now this next one I used a ton before getting a cover stitch machine. That was my primary way of hemming knit garments on a serger, and that is by using a flat lock stitch. Now the instruction manual will say that you will need to use a blind hem foot, but I have also done it just using a regular standard presser foot that comes on your serger, so you don't always have to dig out a blind hem foot, at least in my case. Now I've done a tutorial on how to use a regular foot many years ago, I will link that below, so today we're going to use a blind hem foot for a flat lock stitch. Now as I mentioned I primarily used it for hemming my knit garments also on cardigans over here. When you fold in the bottom it created a really nice flat appearance. The manual will tell you that flat lock stitch is primarily used for decorative use only but I think it has so many more applications so definitely take a look what it can do. So I removed the right needle, inserted a left needle and I'm also going to adjust the tension over here as well. So let me show you how I used to hem with it. So imagine that this is the bottom of my project. Let's go ahead and fold it. Basically, just like you would do it for a blind hem, but just a little bit tighter without leaving any lip for that additional stitch. Then I'm going to place it right over here. If you would like, you can also disengage knife at this point. And let's start stitching. As you can tell, I'm actually not cutting anything away. That's the reason why I said that you can disengage the knife just to be on a safe side. Now comes the coolest part of this technique. Now you want to pull it apart until you start seeing this ladder stitch on the right side of the fabric and on the wrong side of the fabric you're getting a really nice flat seam which encloses that raw edge of the hem that we folded over. So now I think you can see why I really enjoyed this method when hemming my t-shirts and also doing some cardigans and even shorts and leggings and things like that only with a serger because then you can complete an entire project just, you know, <laughs> by staying in one spot with one machine it's really nice it's really efficient and I do like this finishing technique and the look of it now since we're using a blind hem foot on our serger you're probably wondering wait a second can we actually do a blind hem on a serger and yes yes we can let's do it together now here the settings are going to be very very similar to the previous technique of a flat lock seam which is essentially pretty much the same just with a couple of additional things and nuances. And I must say that this is not my favorite technique to use. I prefer to do it either by hand or on a sewing machine 
probably due to the fact that I haven't mastered this technique on a serger to like 300%, but let me show you the essentials of it. Here I have folded my fabric for a blind hem. As you can see, here's the hem, then you fold it in like so, you leave a little lip over here, and what we want to do is we want to align the needle of the serger with the just the very, very, very tip of the edge right over here. Our job here is to make sure that the needle catches just the tiniest amount. You can use the screw right over here in order to adjust your guide. I think here you can really see that if you get really, really, really on the edge of that fold, you can really get a good invisible hem. However, as you saw, I went really slow and it's hard to see because the presser foot of a serger is much bigger than a presser foot of a sewing machine. Therefore, that's one of the reasons why it's not my most favorite technique to do on a serger and I'd rather do it on a sewing machine. But to compare with a flat lock seam, as you can tell, there's a big difference. So this was flat lock seam and this was a blind hem. For this next one, we're going to stay right here with a blind hem foot, but for the settings of the serger, we're actually going to go back to the first technique, which was rolled hem. So set up everything as we did over there, and we're going to make Pintex. As you can see here, I have pressed my fabric, and each one of these folds is going to become a Pintex. Now all we have to do is place our folds underneath the presser foot of our serger and do a rolled hem, but this time on the folded edge. And once it's all done, it's going to look like so. It definitely adds texture and creativity to your garment. Needless to say, you can use contrasting thread like over here or matching thread depending on what you're working with. Now, did this video give you new ideas? Did you learn something new? If so, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to know 10 different ways how you can make your sewing better right now, right this very second without any additional tools, then click on the video right over here. I'll meet you in that video. Bye.